Let's look at this very interesting case of a patient who underwent manual SICS cataract surgery and a month post-operatively presented with appearance like this. The clinical appearance of a large subconjunctival bleb superiorly. The rest of the eye appeared normal, the cornea, the anterior chamber depth, the PCIOL, which was well centered in its place. Now, how would you manage a case like this? Let's move to watching the surgery. The first step that I would always do is perform a paracentesis because I want to gain access to the anterior chamber because of the possibility of it shallowing at any time. Having done that, the next step is in exposing the cyst. So a subconjunctival dissection is performed to expose the cyst. This is what you will see in this part of the video. With care and caution, making sure that we do not accidentally rupture the cyst, the subconjunctival dissection is performed. Following the completion of the dissection, you can actually see the entire cyst now exposed. It's clearly firmly adherent at its base. We now move to dissect the cyst off the surface of the sclera. I do this with the help of a 15 number blade. And as I proceed with the dissection of the cyst from the surface of the sclera, notice what I see. At this point, you'll notice that there is a sudden gush of aqueous. This clearly means this cyst was in continuity via the main SICS tunnel with the anterior chamber. We proceed with the dissection of the cyst and here's what we can see. There is a completely open main SICS tunnel wound with a continuity with the anterior chamber and this fistula resulted in the formation of a cyst. The main SICS wound is explored and this is followed by the complete excision of the cyst wall. The anterior chamber is reformed with the introduction of intracambral air. And now having achieved a well-formed anterior chamber, this main SICS tunnel is now closed down with the help of three interrupted tenoethylon buried sutures. This is what you will see in this part of the video. Each of these sutures is tied with a 3-1-1 buried knot. Tying of the suture should always happen with a well-formed anterior chamber to be able to properly gauge the extent of tightness required for each of these sutures. Having completed one suture, the other two sutures are taken in exactly the same manner. This, as you can see, is at the end of the suturing a well-opposed main SICS tunnel. This is followed by the burying of each of the sutures. In order to bury it, the eye is pulled upwards while the suture is buried in the direction of the cornea. 
And this, as you can see, is the end result of the perfect suturing of the SICS tunnel. This is followed by the hydration of the paracentesis incision. The retracted conjunctiva is then drawn up towards the limbus and either end of it cauterized. This then brings us to the end of the surgery. We must remember that the presence of an unexpected subconjunctival pleb superiorly in the post-operative period following manual SICS is a very good possibility of the presence of a fistula because of an unsealed wound which results in the formation of this cyst. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to manage such a cyst should it occur in the post-operative period following manual SICS surgery. Thank you.